piece here. So, as Dave mentioned, um, we did manage to break the Canadian record over the last uh, 12 months in both the men's and the women's 100 meter backstroke. And quick little clip on those two races. coming up right here. And one second here. Which race is first? It's, uh, I thought I would just go on chronological order here with okay. the uh, men's one first and then the women's. So in 2020, we were in Budapest. I think this was probably Cole's 10th 100 backstroke that he swam. And it was the last meet, the last opportunity we had to really go fast. And he was in a relay against his teammate, who is Shane Ryan, is one of the better uh, backstroke swimmers on, in the ISL and in the world. And uh, he just got in there and busted out a 50.4 100 back. So it was pretty cool. Difference maker, particularly for the strokes. And, and just correct me if I'm, uh, this is the video that you're seeing now on your screen, is that right? Yeah. Great. Yeah. Was from a season ago. It's one of the reasons why I saw Lily King get an opportunity to be the match MVP in the first match of the season. Cover backstroke on the pool deck. And it's Ryan against Ryan. Again, Ryan Murphy, two wins. Shane Ryan, Adelaide Braid, and Cole Pratt. It's going to be between the two in lane number seven. Let three guys go 49-9 yesterday. Murphy, Glinta, and Stewart all went 49-9 on the relays. So if you base it on 24 hours ago, this one could be tight. You can see how close these races are going. Out 23-8. Shane Ryan won match six. Ryan Murphy and Dylan Carter, they were one, two in match number 10. Can they get another effort like that from Dylan Carter? Yeah, Dylan Carter was sort of a surprise of the season getting that second place behind Murphy. You can see right now those three swimmers just like on the relay. They are all right there together. Stewart, you just 23-8, Ryan 23-7, Murphy's in fifth, 23-9. Looks like Carter in the mix, going down the stretch. But now look at Coleman Stewart doing it at the end. Murphy giving it a go, but oh, Glinta somehow got his head on the wall first. That is big for Iron folks. Snatches away the win by two one-hundredths of a second. So that was the um, swim from November of 2020, Dave. That was yeah. Cole Pratt. Yeah, I was wrong. It was an individual hundred. Nevertheless, the uh, you can see how close the race is. That guy, Stewart, who they showed, ended up breaking the world record this this August at the the Naples event November. in uh, 48.33. So everybody's going faster. That's one of the things you guys need to realize is underwater kicking is so important in high-end swimming. All right, so let's see. This, this is the Ingrid uh, record from uh, September of 2021. Yeah. Wow. Now, this is the first meet for Smaliga, so I think she's just trying to find herself and get back into racing shape since this summer. I think the, the swimmer to beat is not necessarily Olivia Smaliga today. Yeah. Three weeks from now? Four weeks from now? <laughs> yeah, no doubt about it. I think it's going to be Duluth. Yeah. Up there in lane number eight. She was 56 mm -hmm. yesterday, and no beat of Nelson in this event. Ernie. 
Vita Nelson has decided not to swim this event. She's got the 100 IM coming out. So she will not be in here. And she was 56 1. So I think I give Duluth, unless Malika can find a different gear on the second day, Duluth might be the swimmer to beat. Allie Duluth with 16 points on day one. Lena Mack with 13 and a half points. Those two were very good on day one. Yeah, right now, it's Maliga looking like a different swimmer. She was third there, much better, but Duluth was first, 26 9. Well, two Ingrid's great turns and great back end. Another one of one two finishes into the turn. The will right even with Allie Duluth. Boy, this would just be huge for LA. They were not expected to be even close here. Wilm is coming home. She's moving in front, and Wilm gets the win for the current. Duluth will settle for second. Ingrid never swears, but I think there was a special word that came out on that moment. And the fun thing about it was she had swum her best time in 57-0 or 57-2, something like that, the meet before, and we were talking and she said, oh, I, I think I can go 56. And the next meet, she just forgot all about 56 and went 55 and then swam 55 a couple of times. In fact, later that night, swam 55.9 again and then took the Canadian record all the way down to 55.6 and the number one swim in the world. Uh, so we're pretty excited. We're off to Eindhoven for the next leg of the ISL season three next week. And uh, Yuri, who is one of our swimmers, and Ingrid and Cole will be um, <clears throat> competing there. Yuri, one of our swimmers from way back, and he's been here in, in Calgary training for the last five weeks, getting a little bit of special uh, 3,433 feet spice to get ready for some great racing next week. Okay, well, that uh, kind of kicks us off here for the start of uh, our Summit Awards. And I'll just show everybody um, quickly what the uh, day is going to look like. <clears throat> so um, we're going to have presentations for the um, sorry just there we go presentations for everybody for uh, those that represented uh, the province of the or various national team um, programs um, there were no provincial rep teams this year or provincial camps which we ordinarily recognize and that's just a result of the uh, conditions that we find ourselves in. Um, provincial and national record breakers. After we do those, we will move into our panel discussion, um, as we mentioned and advertised earlier with Yuri, Cole, and Ingrid. Then we will do our club champions awards, uh, followed by our most improved team spirit and the Zoom Perseverance Award, which is a brand new award, and we'll explain that a little bit as we as we move move to that award. So, we'll talk about provincial or national team representation, uh, swimmers who represent Alberta or Canada on a provincial national team or training camp. And this year, as we mentioned, there weren't any swimmers that participated on anything provincially just because uh, there was nothing that was offered throughout the 2020, uh, sorry, 2000 and yes, 20, 2021 season. But we did have some swimmers who uh, were invited to and did participate in various national team development programs. And that season, uh, this last season, we had Addison Butler, he was a part of the Relay Takeoff Initiative, um, Kian Pratt, the Virtual Distance Camp, and Dawson Sheehan, also a part of the Virtual Distance Camp. When we talk about 
um, events that were travel competition teams, there uh, was really only one, and that was the Olympic and Paralympic team. And we did want to recognize this young lady who represented the Cascade Swim Club for the last 10 years. Um, she had been in Montreal uh, with the national program as uh, Montreal centers its Paralympic athletes in uh, the training venue at the Montreal Olympic Pool and Morgan Bird at the Tokyo 2020 Paralympic Games. Uh, hopefully we all saw she did manage to pick up a relay medal um, as a part of that uh, Team Canada event, and it was her third trip to the Olympic Games. As Dave mentioned, we did have a additional national team member, and that was Cole Pratt, who swam at the Tokyo 2020 Olympic Games. And this is a shot of Cole and his coach Dave at the, uh, at the venue and on the pool deck. And um, as Dave mentioned earlier, um, what's unique about uh, Cole and Cole being on the team, not standing he's a part of the club team, is that he spent um, all of his uh, swimming uh, with the Cascade Swim Club. And when we talk about um, the Olympic Paralympic Games, it's just uh, worth mentioning that not only did Morgan and Cole um, participate for Canada, represent Cascade. We had our coach, head coach Dave Johnson there. Stephanie Coughlin, um, who just through uh, the current circumstances hasn't been on deck very much with us, but she does normally travel with us and is uh, as a massage therapist. She was on staff as a part of the Paralympic team. And then as you've seen around both Yuri is who, who is here today and Rebecca, our Cascade alumni, um, who were members of the organization at one um, point in their swimming career. So some very good Cascade representation that we should all be very proud of. And as Dave mentioned, um, uh, you know, it does take a whole village in our, in our context, a whole club to be able to um, have swimmers at the Olympic Games. And so this is uh, as much of a testament to their, to the coaching they received and their own individual abilities, but to the support that the club gave to all of these athletes through a variety of different, uh, a variety of different ways, right up to the people that they train with um, every day that they were here. So congratulations to all of those, all of those swimmers. Um, provincial record breakers and national record breakers are our next awards that we are, are recognizing here today. When we talk about provincial records, we had four different swimmers um, breaking a number of records. The latest one came at the Western Trans Mountain Festival number two, which happened in August, where the uh, provincial record was broken in the open mixed four by 50 meter freestyle relay. And that was Peyton Kelly, Cole Pratt, Liam Weaver, and Ingrid Wilm. Cole Pratt, as you see, broke a number of um, provincial records in the 100 meter, 200 meter backstroke, both short course and long course over the course of the season. It was a part of that mixed relay as well. And Ingrid broke the women's provincial record in the 100 meter backstroke and was also a part of that mixed relay at the end of the end of the summer. And those were our four provincial record breakers. Um, some pictures over the last couple of seasons. Uh, when it comes to national records in the 2020-21 season. Um, we did just have one, but that was uh, Cole's, which was also a provincial record in the 100 meter backstroke, the time which he broke in November of 2020. So those were some quick um, uh, awards that we had. And now we are going to move on to our panel discussion. And with that, and with us here today, we have Yuri Kissel, we have Cole Pratt, and we have Ingrid Wilm. 
So I am just going to spotlight our three panelists. And as after I do that, once we have them up, we will move to the various questions that we had um, that came in over the week. And we'll just get our panelists, uh, Yuri Cole and Ingrid, to turn on their, their video. And once they've done that, we will get them up. And so there's Cole. And there's Ingrid and there is Yuri. And there we go. I think that we've got them all there. So thanks guys for, for coming on and uh, being with us here today. We've got um, a few questions to go through and some of them are for our specific swimmers and some of them are for everybody. And, um, and I guess we'll, we will start with a question that is for everyone and we'll just get some uh, answers out of, out of each of you. But the question is, um, do you remember winning your first ever swimming medal? And if you do, where was it? And what was that medal for? Yuri, why don't we start with you? Yeah, um, so this is kind of far back, but uh, trying to think, I think I did a competition to kind of qualify for provincials. I forget what the name of it was. And we did a relay where I think we were the only relay team competing. So we didn't get DQ'd, thankfully, and we actually came home with the gold medal. So that was my first medal in swimming. Well done. Well done. Thank you. <laughs> uh, Ingrid, how about you? Yeah, this was back when I lived in Doha. My first medal, I used to be a flyer. I wasn't a backstroker when I was young. It was in 50 fly. No, that was my first medal. And then you, I became a backstroker. I changed my mind. How old were you, Ingrid? How old were you when that happened? I was 10. 10. Okay. But I was only racing two other people. So I metal position anyways <laughs> yep. well that's one more than than yuri and his team had to contend with uh, two more than he had to send with in his team race uh cool how about you do you remember your first medal where it was and what um what the event was um first medal was probably in it was either edmonton or calgary and i know it was a bronze medal and i think it was in 50 back Okay. And how old were you? Do you have any idea? I was probably eight. Eight, eight or nine. Okay. Yeah. Great. And, and so guys, just as a, this is for everybody else, but if you have any other questions that pop up while we were talking to Yuri, Cole and Ingrid, please just put them in the chat and we'll, uh, we'll work our way to all of those questions as well. So this question is specific to Cole and, and Ingrid, but it comes from one of our little Olympic way swimmers. And it is, uh, first for Cole, Cole, what is your fastest butterfly time? And it's not specific on event. So I guess you can choose either the 50 or the 100 short course or long course, maybe the one that you are uh, happiest with, but your fastest butterfly time. Um, probably 50 fly. Mm -hmm. um only reason i say that is because when we were in budapest last year uh i was only like three tenths off the canadian record and finley just out touched me as well so i think it's it's up there as one of my fastest fly events okay and Ingrid, this one is also from our olympic way swimmer and you probably and there's some uh, some leeway there with how you answer it because it's just what is your fastest backstroke time so maybe you can choose your favorite backstroke uh race and and what that time was 
I think the one I have the most FINA points in right now is my 100 back, so the 5561. Um, and this is bad of me, but my favorite event is the 50 backstroke. I like to say I'm a pure sprinter always. Um, and I go a 2608 in that. And you, and you say you're a pure sprinter, but you swam, correct me if I'm wrong, the 200 meter backstroke at almost each and every single one of those, those events, didn't you? No, you're shaking your head, but, but, but you did swim it a fair bit, I believe. <laughs> okay. I also, I think I swam the 100 more though. And if we count the skins, maybe the 50 more, maybe. Fair enough. Right. Okay. Um, Okay, this is a question for um, Yuri, and it's about the events that you swim. And I mean, Yuri, you broke, you were part of the relay team that broke the Canadian record and finished fourth at the Olympic Games um, this summer, which was a, a fantastic swim by each of you guys individually and as the team. Canada's never placed so high in that relay. But what, were you always a freestyler? Is that all of, um, it, it, are all of the events you swim now freestyle? Yeah. It's a hard uh, question. Yeah. Um, for the most part now, it's mostly freestyle. Um, I'll do, so as Dave knows and stuff and Wendy, um, I used to be a backstroker when I first came to Cascade. And it wasn't until I was about 18 years old that I kind of made the move over to freestyle. But just for training purposes and stuff um, and meets, I'll do backstroke every so often. And this coming ISL season, I'm getting some uh, little hints that I might be doing the 100 IM. So, you know, I branch out a little bit, but mostly stick with freestyle. Great, great. But as a youngster, as you said, you, you swam a number of the different events and you weren't always a freestyler. You, as mm -hmm. you said, backstroke, yeah. Great. Um, just had a question pop up here in our chat. Um, It's about, uh, I guess it would be for um, both uh, Yuri and for, for Cole. Did you have sushi or ramen in Japan? Were you able to? And if so, how was it? Um, I can go first here. Uh, so yeah, we had like a cafeteria kind of setting in Japan and uh, they did serve sushi and ramen, and arguably those were probably the best things that they served um, in the cafeteria. My go-to is honestly the udon soup, though. I had that almost every single day. It was nice to kind of calm my tummy and stuff if I got too nervous and everything with the heat, and it's very tasty. So, yeah, that's my go-to. Great. Yeah, well, as Yuri said, they had they had, they had a whole lot of stuff in, in Tokyo. Like, they had food from, like, all all over the world and um i did go to the sushi a lot um but my favorite place was probably the halal section they had a lot of cool they had a lot of nice stuff there so that was probably my go-to when we were there and so so that was some really good um uh food options that you had there what was the as we can just uh um pick up on this theme what if anything was the food that you 100 percent avoided every time or would 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 stick away stick away is you know stick from going to just because it just didn't look like it was either appealing or you had no idea what it was anything like that cooler yuri uh there wasn't anything like too crazy there um and like remembering correctly, there, there's like like full form prawns and stuff like that that I normally wouldn't go for, um, just because there's so much more kind of appealing options to me. So, but like nothing was like too out of the ordinary or too crazy that I would never kind of touch it, you know. Perfect. Um, is a question for um, everybody, but we'll start with Ingrid, and it's about the uh, the the ISL that everyone. I want to say just got back from, but you've been home for a while, but you are just about to take off again on what is the biggest lesson or the biggest takeaway 
that you've learned um, about yourself or your swimming or in swimming in general uh, from that event in, in Napoli? The first thing that came to mind is to not take yourself so seriously. In ISL, you're not only swimming for you, you're swimming for a team. And so I felt a lot of pressure in that regard at the first meet. I wanted to really perform well for my team. And then the second one, we kind of had a talk and I got behind the idea that no matter what I did, they would still cheer for me before my race and they would still love and support me. And so the biggest takeaway and lesson I learned was to just have fun, but to not take yourself so seriously, just go in there, do your thing, no matter what happens, your team's going to have your back. Yeah. Okay. How about you, Yuri? Um, so one th great thing about ISL that I've learned <clears throat> is, is just a lot of opportunities to swim the same race and like your good race and kind of really nail different cues you could be thinking about during your race and things that kind of work for you. So I learned a lot, especially in my second season, about certain cues that I know worked well for me to think out at certain points of my race, technical and stuff, and uh, kind of how to go about my race to swim at the fastest. Whereas before, I wouldn't think much, just gun it. And I kind of learned that, that wasn't the best way for me to race it. So yeah, I kind of learned a lot about how to race, basically. Okay. And how about, how about you, Cole? Um, probably the biggest thing for me and uh, I talked about this before, but you at ISL, you get to see everybody um, behind the blocks. You get to see them in the ready room. You get to see how they are with, uh, with their team. And you get to see them, like, how they are as, as actual people. Uh, on, on TV, you only get to see them, like, with their game face on behind the blocks. And you don't really get to see the human emotions that they have. So being there and seeing that they're actual like regular people and not being so scared about them and and realizing that you're just like them is has helped me a lot as as a swimmer and going like gaining confidence in, in racing those guys and realizing they're not superhuman and uh yeah that's what i get from that great great um and as a question from one of our coaches um, for the group, and you can take it in the context of either the Olympics or the ISL. But uh, Cole, what what was between one of those between those two events? What was the biggest thing that uh, you came away being surprised about? If if anything, or if it was all 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 just normal then that that's fine too but being at those two events um is, is there anything that you came back uh from the event and just go oh we didn't expect that or that was that was something that i never thought i thought i would see at one of these events um not really everything there is is really like it's a lot it's it's a lot like how you'd expect it to go um probably isl uh, how fast paced it is um, just going from like one event to the next um, that was uh, that was the biggest thing for me I know uh, I had Finley tell me in the first season how quick paced it was and I didn't really expect it to be as as fast as uh, he said it was but it was really it's a really quick paced event and you got to stay on your toes the whole way Okay. Great. Uh, Yuri, how about you? I mean, you, you've been now to, to two Olympic Games, once in 2016 in Rio, and then again last summer in Tokyo. And from either of those two, or, or from the two seasons of the ISL that you've, or three seasons, I like, was it three seasons or two seasons for you for ISL now? Uh, three. Three for you. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So I guess from, because those are kind of the pinnacle of, of the sport, anything that you've taken away as a, as a, as a big surprise from those events? Uh, I'd say the biggest surprise uh, for ISLs was basically kind of kind of what Cole was saying. 
you get to kind of meet other swimmers and kind of get to know them. And I was just really surprised about how kind of respectful and nice a lot of the swimmers around the world are. And um, just how willing, like I noticed when I'm on teams with people, how willing they are to try to help you out and help you get better. And everyone's just trying to make each other better. So that was really cool. Um, for Olympics, I was, it's more in Rio, I guess. I was just surprised by how fun it was, to be honest. Um, it was just a blast uh, getting to see other people compete, uh, doing events after, staying in Rio, getting to walk, look at Rio with my family and stuff like that. Um, it was just all around a really great time. So I was uh, really surprised by just how much fun I had. And then Tokyo, of course, which is expected, there's a little more of a damper with COVID and stuff. Couldn't leave the village, couldn't watch other events, stuff like that. But um, was just grateful that they actually were running the Olympics at that time. But it felt a little more like business. For sure. Ingrid, how about you? Uh, Yuri stole mine. I was going to go off also what Cole said. I What surprised me was, as Cole said, how human some of the other swimmers were and how goofy some of them are off off pool deck. Some of them are so fun to be around and also their willingness to teach and learn. Um, just even from swimmers that are slower than them, if I had some tip for them, they were, there was no egos on the pool deck and it was just a really pleasant experience to be with. And I going into ISL, I did expect some big egos. So the fact that there wasn't any was the biggest surprise to me. They're just genuinely nice people, most of them, yeah. Great. So here's another question that came in and it's really for all three and, and uh, but we'll start with you, Ingrid. And it's, um, can be swimming related or, or not, but when we talk about your favorite athlete, all sports, um, as I said, swimming or not, uh, who is your favorite athlete and why? Comic books don't count. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Um, Might be a stretch. <laughs> probably Simone Biles and Serena Williams. Just how far they use their platform to push for females in sport. I really respect that. I just, I respect that a lot. Yeah. Great. Great. Uh, great answer. Uh, Yuri, how about you? Uh, uh, it's a tough question, um, but I know one athlete that I loved growing up because I was really into hockey and had dreams of being an NHL goaltender as a kid, even though I never really played hockey, but um, was Mika Kippersoff. Uh, he's the Flames goaltender back in the day. And the biggest reason why the Flames should have won the cup in 2004, in my opinion. So uh, I would say that was my favorite athlete. I still say 34 is my favorite number because that was the number he wore. So uh, yeah. And then in the swim worlds, uh, my favorite athlete growing up was James Magnuson. I remember he's an Australian sprinter does a hundred and goes down to 50 free as well. And I just remember growing up swimming at Cascade and stuff like that. Um, when I went to practices and would be just dead tired before a practice, I'm like, I don't know how I'm going to go fast and stuff. I just like throw on 2011 worlds where Magnuson won gold and stuff. And they're just screaming Magnuson, the magnificent and stuff like that. And it just got me so pumped up to swim. So he was definitely a idol of mine and getting to see him and race him in person was definitely pretty cool. And he's kind of starstruck for sure. Right on, right on. Cool. How about you? Uh, my favorite athlete growing up was definitely uh, Michael Phelps. Um, I remember watching him race in London on on TV here, and I remember everybody was cheering for him. I'm like, oh, why do we cheer for him? He's an American. And then uh, my mom said, oh, because everybody loves Michael Phelps. I'm like, oh, cool, and like be on the on the pool deck with finley uh just watching his races and analyzing them uh and that was like a really really cool thing like i can i can probably watch his 100 fly from beijing and and recite everything the announcers are saying um and that was really cool for me um uh, favorite athlete right now it's probably probably caleb dressel because uh i've got to train with him a few times and he's a he's a really nice guy uh and he's a he's a really funny dude as well cool great um this one we'll we'll throw it ingrid and it comes from from the group that's here right now and you know your circumstance um 
going to the ISL this summer was was fairly unique, as Coach Dave sort of mentioned, coming on on the last day, going on to a team of established international swimmers that had, you know, for the most part, um, been there before, um, and, and you sort of walking into that environment. So the question is, how do you handle um, all of that kind of stress before a swim meet? Make it till you make it. Uh, no, the, that was what I was expecting going in, all of them to just be so high above me that I wouldn't fit in. But the team that I had was so great at making everybody just feel human. Like they're just another person on the pool deck. So, and I don't actually follow much swimming, if I'm honest. So a lot of the names, my dog's coming to say hi, I'm sorry. Uh, a lot of the swimmers, I didn't actually know the name of. So if I saw their face on the pool deck, I didn't know who they were. So it was just another swim meet to me. It's just another day in the job. Great, great. Uh, Yuri, what is your favorite set to do in practice? And Yuri, what is your least favorite set to do in practice? And you can choose it, choose something from, you know, anywhere inside of the, the, the length of your long career so far? Uh, I'd say my favorite set in practice would probably be go home. You're, you're doing a great job or go in the hot tub. You know, you're doing really well. Um, <laughs> but other than that, like anything that's like lots of rest, like high octane, like just gunning it like fifties, either hundreds or 25s with lots of rest. Um, it's usually sets I can do really well in. Those are kind of the sets I kind of prefer, but I do kind of build up and get a little nervous for them kind of because I have like goals and expectations for those kind of sets, but those are usually the sets I feel most accomplished after. And then my least favorite set, like anything with fly in it or breaststroke that's like longer than 25 meters. Um, I usually start dying pretty quickly in those strokes. So I'm not a big fan of those. So. Okay. I mean, that said, you've got the IMs coming up, as you mentioned, at the ISL. So it might be a little work to cram in in the next couple of days before you guys leave, right? For sure. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, you know what, since we, this was such a good one from, uh, from Ingrid and, and uh, we have so much experience here on our panel, but what do you, how do you handle the stress of going into a summit or a high level, high level meet, like the, something that's happening at the ISL or the Olympic games? What is it that you do? Um, so throughout my career, I've struggled with stress and stuff like that. So I've had poor performances and threw kind of races away just based on being overly nervous and kind of crumbling under the pressure. So that's actually something that I've worked to develop throughout my career and is a constant kind of learning process for sure. And I'm learning more about myself and how to kind of counter, um, nervous energy. Uh, one thing that's very helpful is breathing, uh, I've learned and has a direct influence on how you feel. So just doing, taking deep breaths in through the nose, out through the mouth, holding breath. And I have a, I have a whole routine I do, uh, if I ever feel I'm getting a little too nervous. Um, so I do that on top of that. I also do meditation as well. Sometimes, uh, I'll go through a guided meditation on my phone or something like that, just to kind of get just learn how to deal with stress or get my mind off of actually racing and stuff like that. And then finally, uh, what was I going to say? Um, yeah. One thing that a coach of mine told me that really kind of helped kind of put things in perspective and stuff. And he'd always say going into races. And then I told myself and kind of did help with stresses is two lengths of the baths, which is two lengths of the pool basically. And uh, you do it every day. This is nothing new. Like it's swimming. It's just swimming. I know it means a lot to you, but kind of just step back and just look as it's just a race. You've done a hundred times, thousand times, a million times. Now, you know, it's nothing to be nervous about. And uh, just try to have fun in the moment. And if you have fun in the moment, then you're going to swim pretty well. So. Great. Great. That's some good advice. Um, Cole, how about you? How is anything that you do specifically to handle the stress of competition up behind the blocks or going to the event, the lead up to the event? Um, probably, probably like I, I get nervous, like on every, every match, like day, day one, I got the tuner back as my first of four events that day. And it's, it's like, I get, I get nervous every time in that ready room. 
because uh, turning back is my best event and I always want to do well in that. So always getting up to the blocks is always, always a little, a little nervous uh, for, for that. But then once I, once I get up there, you just, you just got to go, you just got to go. Don't, don't think just, just jump. It's like if you're jumping off the, the high tower in the, in the diving, in the diving well, if you go and you look over the edge, it's, it's going to be scary, but you just, you can't think you just got to go you just got to jump. And then, and then you realize it's not that bad. And uh, that's a good, it's a good way to break the ice into every match is to, to get that one out of the way. And then everything else is just fun after that. Great. And all in speaking of all of those events that you, that you do swim in your race, you said you had four on the first day, but um, those events or other events, what is your favorite event to race? To race? Um, I love to swim, turn it I am. Um, I do really like tuned fly short course. Uh, I haven't got to swim with that in a while, but I feel like I could do something really good in that. And then I also like the hundred free relays with, with everybody. You just, you get a lot of energy with everybody there. And uh, especially at ISL, you have both teams, you have eight guys all cheering each other on and everybody's going so fast and there's so many, so many waves. It's all chaos. And it's, it's just great. Ingrid, how about you? What's your, your favorite event to race? Everyone who's in my training group knows my favorite event to race is actually the 50 breaststroke. It's one of my few events where I feel there's no pressure and I genuinely enjoy just having fun before the race. But Cole did raise a good point. I also do love relays, but my favorite is the mixed relay. I like how quickly it could change. Very, very exciting, very exciting to watch all yeah. sorts of drama in that race. Yeah, exactly. Uh, uh, Yuri, how about you? What's your favorite event? Um, I guess like Ingrid and stuff, I guess my favorite event would be something like a 50 breast or something that, or like something that I don't normally do just cause there's no pressure with that. But on top of that, something that I get like the most kind of satisfaction if I do well and stuff in would be the hundred freestyle. Um, if I do well in that, I just get a lot of like pride in myself and stuff for it. But, uh, yeah. And then also on top of that relays, I always love to step up for and stuff and uh, mixed relays on top of that, like Ingrid said, are very, very entertaining. No one's ever really out of the race until it's over. So I love those for sure. Yeah. yeah. Great. And we had a question came in specifically for you, Ingrid, and I'm not sure it's happened to you recently, but I'm sure it's happened to you at one point. You've been swimming for a while, but what do you do when you lose your goggles when you're racing? No, uh, <laughs> no, uh, we know the length of the pool. So initially there is always that panic when you can't see, um, but we know the length of the pool and you know what the markers do look like. So you just trust your, the process, trust your training and still go as fast as you can. You just forget about it. It's not something you can control anymore. There's water in your goggles or your goggles are off. You just keep going and finish that race and try to get to that wall first and pretend because you can't see the competition that you are getting to that wall first. <laughs> great, great. I mean, you know how many strokes exactly it takes you in the race to get from one end to the other where it's short or long. So you could probably do it with your eyes closed if you had to, couldn't you? Yes, most definitely. And a few times I've almost had to. <laughs> <laughs> um, a question for uh, Yuri. How long? does your meat warm-up take and is there anything specific that you do for a meat warm down uh after your races or in between races yeah um so my meat warm-up might be on the shorter side of a lot of people just because i usually do the shorter events so it could be anywhere from like 800 to the longest it ever get is probably 1200 meters um and then for warm down uh, one thing I was always told and stuff is make sure that you get a lot of air in while you're swimming down stuff because the air can like help move with the lactate around stuff and like pump the blood and everything and kind of clear that. So a lot of my warm down usually revolves around backstroke and kick on a board. And then 
I'll do that. So I start to feel a little better, maybe do a couple of bursts in there to really kind of flush out the lactate. And then at the very end, try to do a little bit like a 50 or hundred freestyle, just to really remember my stroke before my next race, basically. Great. Great. Um, Ingrid, is there anything that you do in terms of uh, specifics for meat warm up or cool down? As, just like sort of Yuri mentioned. Um, well, I do a little bit more for warm up. I usually do four, 12 to 14. Uh, I like to actually get my heart rate up before I even start doing kick or pull. I get, like to get my blood pumping before I even start doing specialized stuff. So I don't just leave the pace to the end. I do some heart rate 50s right off the bat and then I do my kick and pull if I feel I need it and that always varies depending on how my body's feeling and then I do my pace work and for cool down while I do about a 200 easy right after the race I then follow it up with a heart rate set I like to get my heart rate to over 160 to help my body flush I I found that very helpful over the years and then I do the same thing for a little kick set because as a backstroker you use your legs a lot. And for most of my races, I actually use my underwaters a lot. So I find it's important to also flush the legs properly. And then I do another 200 easy, like Gary said, just deep breaths, trying to get oxygen properly into that fresh new blood I just got in. Great. Cool. How about you? Um, I probably do the longest warm up out of everybody here because we got some hardcore sprinters. Um, when I did my 100 back in Budapest, I was probably in the water an hour and a half before my race. And I just, I just swam around for, for 30 minutes, just, just cruising, getting loosened up. And then, uh, then I actually started to do some activation stuff. And that's when, I, that's when I did my best time was when I had probably like a 3K warm up or something around that. And then warm down protocol um, we like to do a variation of the set at either 8 to 12 50s or 6 100s where you go too smooth and then you go for uh, descending or strong getting your heart rate up above 160 and then the last couple are just easy and uh, we do that at the end of every every big meet but sometimes you don't have time for that um, when I was in, uh, in Naples, I had the hundred back and then the hundred I am three minutes after. And, uh, I either had time to walk around the, the comp pool and walk back to the, to the ready room. Or if somebody came to pick up my clothes for me, I had time to do a 75 easy in between my races. So it just, it all, uh, varies on, on how the day looks and and what you're doing and what events you're swimming and yeah but we usually have a, a warm down protocol great great so we just have we'll just do a couple quick questions here as we kind of uh wrap up our our discussion with you guys and it's been it's been great having you here and getting some insights into you and your swimming and um you know your 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 background um a couple quick light and easy questions cool your favorite meal? Oh man, my mom is such a good cook. It's hard to choose. Um, uh, probably, probably Thanksgiving dinner. It's just so big, and there's so much variety, and you just have so much. And that's probably my favorite. Okay, Yuri, your favorite city, your favorite country you visited um, through swimming? Uh, also, I was like low key thinking Cole would be like, my mom's such a good cook. And then he's like, <laughs> cold pizza. I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> um, so, my favorite city or place I've like visited while swimming was the yeah. question. Yes. Um, so, one of my favorite places, I don't know if it's my favorite overall and stuff, but the place I've been to a couple of times, I actually got a go around and be a tourist and after a bit was Tokyo mm. uh just the culture there is super different super cool and stuff everyone there is so nice you could be having a crummy day go out and get some ramen and then all of a sudden you're just happy because everyone's like hey, good, 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 good. when you walk in and stuff and they're all like stoked to see you and then stoked to see you leave you know and all that so it's just like a great mood um lots to do a lot of fun there and um 
yeah, I think Tokyo is probably up there for me. Great. Ingrid, favorite ice cream flavor? Lemon sorbet. I Lemon love sorbet. it. I always try to get it. Lemon sorbet. Perfect. That was an easy one. Uh, and uh, how about this? Uh, you can all scream it out at the same time, and that way we don't uh, if anybody who doesn't hear. Favorite coach? Don't. <laughs> <laughs> And that's about a time that we have. We won't put you guys on the spot with that one or else we'll have all sorts of people either uh, terribly happy or terribly upset. So that that we, you guys don't have to answer that question. Uh, I know you guys have had great coaches, uh, both uh, obviously currently we uh, you have great coaches and you've had great coaches in the past and they've all contributed to the, the success that you have uh, enjoyed and are currently enjoying. So um, that's great, guys. And we really do appreciate you being on here and, and talking to everybody. And uh, it's made it for a, a really great moment for everybody. So that was kind of all the questions we had. And um, we, we, again, we appreciate you being on here and appreciate your time this afternoon. So thank you very much for being here uh, on behalf of the Cascade Swim Club, everybody. Okay. Thank you for listening to us talk. <laughs> yeah, thanks guys for having us. Yeah. It's Sandy. <laughs> uh, okay, so with that, we will um, just get moving on to the next part of our summit awards and um, We'll be moving to our club champions uh, awards. So club champions for everybody, uh, this hasn't changed in, in years and years and years. This is your highest ranked individual swim, uh, swim based on FINA points in Olympic events. So the Olympic event schedule has changed over the years, but it's been fairly consistent. And that's why um, those are the events that we, that we choose for the uh, Class Gate Club Champions Award. So our first category is the 10 and under girls. And our runner up was Rachel Hauseman uh, for her 100 meter backstroke. And the winner in the 10 and under girls is Vivian Weir for her 50 meter freestyle when she went 38.55 and scored 231 uh, FINA points. Congratulations, Vivian. Our next category is the 10 and under boys. And we had a tie in the, in the runner up um, for the runner up. And that was both Kieran Black and Ryder Heskey. They scored 173 points. That was for Kieran's 50 meter freestyle and Ryder's 100 meter backstroke. The winner in the 10 under category for his 100 meter backstroke was Locke Sear, scoring 174 points. It was very close, just one point. And that was in his 100 meter backstroke as well. In the girls, 11 and 12 category, our runner-up was Lila Thiessen, and that was for her 50-meter freestyle, and that was a long course swim. And the winner in the girls, 11 and 12, that was Lydia Zelke, and that was for her 50-meter freestyle. She went 29.96 and scored 493 FINA points. In the boys, 11 and 12, runners-up, Declan McLaughlin, um, for his 50 meter freestyle and the winner, Sebastian Polacek in his 50 meter freestyle, he went 34, one, six and scored 229 FINA points. Next category is girls 13 and 14. The runner up was Maddie Connell for her 50 meter freestyle. And the winner was Chloe Baker scoring 591 points for her, her long course 50 meter freestyle. The boys 13 and 14, runner up was Ryan Zhang for his 200 meter freestyle. And that was a short course uh, swim that he did at the end of July. The winner, 
scoring 464 points. And again, it was a pretty close uh, call in 13, 14 boys was Jonah Smith, his long course 200 meter freestyle swim that he did at the Western Challenge Mountain Festival, 211.70, scoring 464 points. Next is the girls 15 to 17, runner up was Joanna Robertson in her long course 200 meter freestyle. And the winner in the 15 and 17 category, Peyton Kelly for her 50 meter freestyle long course, time of 2670, scoring 696 points. And that was done at the Western Trans Mountain Festival. In the 15 to 17 year old boys, runner up was Cameron Brill. Uh, for his 100 meter breaststroke that he did at Olympic trials. And the winner for his 100 meter freestyle, they did at the Western Trans Mountain Festival, Addison Butler, 52.99, scoring 693 points. In the senior girls category, runner up uh, goes to Peyton Kelly. And in the senior category, it's the open category. So swimmers of all ages are eligible. And Peyton scored 696 points. That was her 50 meter freestyle. And the winner, who was a part of our panel, and that was Ingrid Wilm for 100 meter backstroke, time of 59.88, scoring 888 FINA points. In the senior boys category, runner up was Liam Weaver, scored 709 points. He just missed cracking the 23 mark at our meet in the summer in the 50 meter freestyle. And the winner was Cole Pratt for his 100 meter backstroke. Uh, they did Olympic trials, 53-5-4, scoring 908 FINA points. Those ladies and gentlemen are your Cascade Club champions for the 2021 season. Next, we're gonna be moving on to most improved swimmer awards as well as our team spirit and the Zoom per Perseverance Awards. Most, and we're gonna be going by the group. So uh, most improved will be are determined by the coaching staff based on performance, attitude, attendance, coachability, and more. Team spirit awards. Uh, voted on by the swimmers and awarded to the athlete who consistently gem, gem, uh, demonstrates a high level of Cascade team spirit. Zoom Perseverance Swimmer Award. This is determined by the coaches. This is brand new for this year. And uh, hopefully this is the, well, it is the first, that it is also the last time that we have to give out this award um, determined by the coaches and awarded to the athlete who consistently demonstrated a high level of consistency and effort while working remotely. So first up, we will have the most improved starting with Olympic way. And I believe that we will have um, there we are, Coach Fern on to um, present. Yep. Hi, everybody. It's Fern here. Um, I'd like to uh, welcome everybody to the Summit Awards. And um, the coaches of Olympic Way, Coach Ireland, Coach Marin, Tally, and myself, would like to present the most improved female swimmer to Elsa Benedictson. Um, and this is always a difficult decision to make because everyone in Olympic Way improves. Um, we consider a swimmer's attitude, consistency, effort, and skill development in this award. Um, some of Elsa's strengths are stamina, attitude, and the effort she puts into every swim practice. Elsa listens to the coaches, and tries to implement the coach's directions. For example, her flutter kick was a skill that she really had to work at and focus on to keep it going. Elsa never gave up and she never complained. Her freestyle and back swims have improved significantly over this year with respect to breathing and kicking. Elsa's always willing to try something new and ask questions if she's unsure of the drill or the set. And she has become more confident. And even if she has some hesitation about something, she gets in the water and just goes for it. 
She's a good teammate to the other swimmers and has a positive attitude that is infectious to all the other swimmers. Maybe I shouldn't say infectious right now, but she's a good influence on the, all our other swimmers. Um, congratulations, Elsa, and have a great season with JAG Gold this year. So the most improved male swimmer for Olympic Way, we would like to present the award for to Neil Sear. As you can see in the picture there, Neil is in the middle looking at the starter. And um, he has no problem swimming without goggles, as you can see. Neil is a swimmer that shows up to every practice with a positive attitude, ready and willing to swim his best. He's not only would consistently ask the coaches questions to fully understand what was being asked of him, but he would also apply the corrections given to him and check back to make sure he did it properly. His determination to improve in the water by working on his speed, his technique and endurance paid off as near the end of the year, Neil was someone who was regularly leading his lane and helping out his teammates. Even while being on Zoom, Neil demonstrated consistent effort and came to practice with great energy. To this day, Neil is a swimmer who continues to work hard and bring his amazing attitude to both the swim meets and to practices. And we hope to see him improve even further in his swimming career. Congratulations, Neil. And we have Ireland here. Uh, looks like Ireland will be available for our Team Spirit Award. Alrighty, so when we had uh, asked the Olympic Way kids to vote for the Spirit Award, we told them to think of a teammate who was respectful, supportive, committed, hardworking, and is a leader with a positive attitude. Caden, and, Caden Jones embodies what the Spirit Award is. He joined our group later in the season and added an energetic and joyful attitude to our practices, both in and out of the water. Caden walked onto the pool deck or the field or onto Zoom and always greeted the coaches and his teammates with a smile. During practices, he would cheer on the other swimmers and provide them with words of encouragement. He noticed his teammates' improvements, gave positive feedback, and had a high five waiting to celebrate their accomplishments. This helped to motivate him and his teammates. He approached each set with a big smile, maybe a laugh and a positive mindset. From all the Olympic Way coaches, congratulations, Caden. So for the next one, as we all know, last year we had to spend a lot of time doing Zoom practices. Now, while these weren't ideal for Olympic Way, we all pushed through and worked hard to get better as a team. Olivia Dillon stayed positive throughout the whole time we needed to Zoom. She showed up on almost every call and put in all the effort she could while her brother would crawl under her as she planked. She took our feedback through the screen and would work on anything we corrected. Not only did this make the exercises easier for her to do, but it also translated into her swimming. When we could finally get back to the pool, Olivia was ready, excited, and quickly excelled in the water. Congratulations, Olivia. Great. Um, thank you, Fern, and thank you, Ireland. Um, next. We'll be moving to the JAG Gold Awards. And
Hi, everybody. Okay, so I think we're starting with most improved female first. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. Should I wait for the photo? Oh, just go right ahead and I'll follow along. Okay, well, congratulations, Brooklyn McKean. Brooklyn is our um, most improved female. There she is for Jag Gold last year. And uh, this award certainly has a very special meaning to me, especially because Brookie has been with the club like for as long as I can remember. Uh, she, you know, I mean, I remember Brooklyn swimming at Acadia Pool in swim school too, doing her half lengths because that's as far as they could go at that at that time. Uh, so it's pretty exciting to see um, the progression she's made over the years, not to mention in the last year. Um, so um, Brooklyn swam two years with Jag Gold and she made quite a transformation. Um, last year we were in out of the water so much, but every time we were able to return to swimming, um, Brooklyn seemed more enthusiastic, more driven, um, more focused, and just more keen to, to, to work hard and, and do a great job in the pool. She literally went from being, uh, you know, the kid who would show up, um, she didn't have her cap on, she wasn't ready, she had to fill up her water bottle, and she, you know, she started out as, uh, you know, we were always saying, come on, Brookie, let's get in the water, it's time to start warm up. Uh, to, you know, we, in the springtime, we were able to return to Candy Meadows pool and uh, they were in their four squares. So there's only, you know, eight kids in the pool at a time. Well, Brookie was lined up first in line, wanted to know what equipment we needed. She was ready to get in. She was eager to try. And it was really, really exciting to watch this transformation. She had a couple of really great test sets and practice and she was just so motivated to to get in and and attack each practice it was just fantastic to watch she um she you know her underwater skills improved tremendously uh, she loves to do kick sets <laughs> if you if you ever say we're going to do kick with fins that's when brookie gets the most excited not so much with breaststroke but she's working on it um you know brookie just has a great personality and she's very motivated and it's just been so exciting to watch her, you know, transform and get motivated and, and work so hard. Um, I think, you know, <laughs> Brookie has a really fun personality. Uh, what you see is what you get. And she'll tell you exactly what's, what's on her mind. And one of her favorite saying is, sayings to the coaches is, I don't get it, I don't get it. And she'll tell you right off the bat, but um, you know, she's eager to learn and she's pretty keen to improve. And, you know, I, I got to coach um, with coach Christina a couple Saturdays ago and she's still leading the lane. And so that's super exciting to see. So congratulations, Brookie. Good job. Okay. Most improved male. Well, this was a big one too. So congratulations. I'd like to wait for the photo. There he is, Ryder. Ryder, good job. Congratulations. So Ryder was our selection for most improved male. And you know, for just so, just so you can appreciate the type of kid Ryder is, um, he's a he's a big stats guy. So not only for swimming but other sports as well. But Ryder just has a real interest in. He wants to know who's the fastest. Well, he does know. He he follows swimming very closely. He, uh, he knows, you know, who's the fastest in the world, records broken, time splits, all the details. Ryder usually keeps me informed. So he's, he's on top of it all, but he just has this fantastic interest in swimming and he just loves it. He's very passionate about it. And, you know, when at swim meets, you can see a lot of, you know, eight, nine, 10 year old kids are socializing and, you know, their coaches have to remind them to pay attention and not miss the race. Um, he's, uh, Ryder is the kid watching the scoreboard and watching the pool. He wants to know who's swimming, what their times are, you know, and this sort of thing. So he's just very interested in what's happening in the pool. So it's really great. Um, he over, I mean, we have watched Ryder mature in so many ways, 
he's also been with Jack was with the Jack Gold Group for two years. And, you know, he sort of he became a better listener. He's more coachable. And, you know, he now sees um, how close it is to how, how important it is to, to pay close attention to detail and listens to technique the feedback. And uh, he's worked really hard overall on his technique and special attention to his underwater, uh, which has helped his overall uh, skills improve. He's been able to kick some bad habits. Uh, one of, I would say, one of his worst ones was peeking at the wall and backstroke. So he was able to crack that bad habit. And we, we all know how difficult that can be to do. So good job, Ryder, on that one. Um, you know, Ryder is a great teammate, always encouraging and complimenting his peers and brings a really nice energy to the pool. He's competitive, he's enthusiastic, and he's really been a group leader this past year. So it's been great to have him with the group. Um, not only in the pool, but also with Zoom. You know, his attendance in Zoom was great. He, um, he not only signed on, but he would work really hard, pay, pay close attention to, to um, good technique again. And uh, he worked really hard. So that was great, kept him moving. And anytime there was an opportunity to book a lane to go swimming with his dad, they, they took those opportunities. So that was great. And, um, you know, he always put forth his best effort, demonstrating good techniques and overall strength and coordination. So congratulations, Ryder. Good job on last year's improvements. Okay, team spirit. Oh, Kieran. Okay, congratulations, Kieran, on team spirit. And again, voted on by the teammates. And, uh, you know, I always think every, every group needs a personality like Kieran. Uh, Kieran's energy for swimming is endless. <laughs> he always has pos he is always positive, and no matter the challenge, he's ready. Kieran is a natural leader and likes to make sure everybody is doing things properly. And if you're not, he will kindly correct you. Uh, Kieran's excitement for swimming is contagious. And like Coach Fern said, maybe we shouldn't be saying those words right now, but it really is. And his energy, he brings such a good energy to the group. Uh, last fall, shortly before we were shut down in November, Kieran broke his ankle and quite badly. He was out for a while and uh, I think he broke it playing soccer at school or something. But unfortunately, this meant Kieran began his Zoom sessions sitting in the chair and just watching the group work out, <laughs> uh, which I'm sure he found quite frustrating just knowing Kieran. Um, although he wasn't able to do many of the exercises, he still had great attendance. He showed up determined to do his best job and uh, he kept a positive attitude and made the best of his situation. And before you knew it, he was up and at him with the rest of the group. And I think it was quite good physio for his ankle in the end. <laughs> when, uh, just as an aside, when I know someone is ready to, to try give a hundred fly a go in Jay Gold, um, I'd like to talk to them about it first, just to make sure that they are also feeling ready. And uh, when I mentioned to Kieran that I wanted to enter him in a hundred fly, his reaction was absolute pure joy. He was so excited. He was so excited. And I'm sure his reaction would have been the same had I told him he was going to swim 200 fly. But it's this kind of energy that Kieran brings to the group that, you know, people look up to him uh, as a leader and he just loves swimming. He loves being at swimming uh, and he's not afraid of any challenge. Personalities like Kieran play an important part of keeping the group energized and motivated. And uh, Kieran is always supportive and encouraging of his teammates and he's team a team player and he cheers loud. So congratulations, Kieran, good job. Okay, one more. This is a fun one. I'm so glad that we, we added this to our list of awards this year. The, the Zoom Perseverance Award this year goes to Bennett. Who else, right? When selecting this Zoom Perseverance Award, this was a no-brainer for Jay Gold. There were a few good reasons why Bennett is the select recipient for this award. Okay, number one, perfect attendance. Bennett attended every single Zoom session which is just awesome. I don't think I attended every single Zoom session, but I think he did have one time when he was able to go swimming instead of, of uh, Zooming. So we 
obviously we wanted him to do that instead, but he was there all the time. Good job, Bennett. Number two, not only did he attend, he also showed up with a fantastic attitude. He was always in the mood for whatever we had planned, never complained or questioned and always gave his best effort. Bennett was always happy to see his swimming buddies and made the most of every practice with them. Number three, he was always ready to get started. This was sometimes a challenge with the Jag, the Jag Gold and the Olympic Way swimmers uh, is uh, making sure everyone started together and on time. And uh, Bennett was always on task and always ready to go. So good job. Uh, Bennett worked really hard on, on good technique and we watched his coordination and strength improve as his workouts continued. Bennett was great about making corrections and adjustments and no questions asked. He's always doing a good job. And number four, and this is my favorite, dancer extraordinaire. <laughs> wow, can this kid dance? We often would play this game at the end of our, our workouts called freeze dance. It was the best part of Zoom. And uh, Coach Kara would work the music. And when she shut the music off, the kids had to freeze. But it was honestly one of my favorite parts of Zoom was just watching Bennett dance because he's, he's such a fabulous dancer. Um, anyway, Bennett made the best of the situation, was grateful for the time he had to connect with his friends and enjoyed each challenge we set up for him. Uh, without a doubt, Bennett's commitment to Zoom helped him return to the pool a stronger kid. So great job, Bennett, on this well-deserved award. Awesome. Great, thank you. And next we have the JAG Blue Awards. Hi everyone, not sure, can you hear me? You're good, Kara. Yep. Okay, perfect. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Uh, thanks for coming tonight, virtually again. Uh, so I'm very pleased to present the Most Improved Female Award to Amelia Woods. Amelia was new to Cascade, uh, and not just new to Cascade, but new to the world of competitive swimming. So she came to us kind of in a, in a strange a strange season, but over the course of the season, I was very impressed and really pleased to see her confidence. Uh, oh, thanks, Coach Christina. Uh, so seeing her confidence build, uh, you know, each time we were in the water, she was able to learn a little bit more about how to navigate sets what kind of effort we need to put in for different types of sets. Uh, her strokes improved immensely and she was our first JAG blue swimmer to be able to hold 50s kick under a minute. So that was massive. Uh, so thank you to me. I'm getting notifications coming up on my on my screen as well. So congratulations to Amelia. Uh, very, very well deserved most improved award. Great. And just so if you didn't see what is going on with the notifications, it is Coach Kara's birthday today. Happy birthday, Coach Kara. Thank you. If you hear clattering, something's going on upstairs. I think my husband and my son are up to something upstairs. <laughs> All right, so we have our most improved male for Jag Blue. So most improved male for the past season is Alex Kurdov. So Alex has been with me for a while. And one of the very clear things that we saw this season was that he had a goal. He set his goal and every day he came into practice working towards achieving that goal. I noticed that his consistency and practice really uh, improved. I noticed that his effort really improved and all of those things came together to help him achieve his goal. I think it was particularly challenging because we were in and out of the water so often through the season. Uh, another piece that really I, I feel like makes uh, makes Alex our 
very deserving most improved male for the season is just his enthusiasm and the fun that he was having each and every practice. Um, one of the things that was very challenging for Alex was consistency in his freestyle kick. So as part of his you know, goal and what he was working towards was just being able to maintain a very consistent freestyle kick. And by the end of the season, he was able to do that. So I'm incredibly proud of the, the effort that Alex put in and I'm very, very pleased to, uh, to award him most improved for the past season. All right, so next we have our Team Spirit Award. So our Team Spirit Award is uh, being given to Mahira Patel. Mahira is a great team leader. She's not always the loudest person on the pool deck, but she has this quiet presence that just brings everybody together. She models incredible um, effort and practice and she really does help to keep everyone on track. She demonstrates day in and day out what we need to do and supports all of the group just in helping them navigate sets, helping them stay on, on time, on task. So very well deserved for Mahira Patel. Now our Zoom Online Perseverance Award. This one was also very, very clear. Just like Bennett was clear for Jag Gold. Emily Huang, again, was new to Cascade, new to competitive season. And Emily had kind of a unique entrance into our, into our program. She actually started with Jag Blue while we were Zoom training. She transitioned out of our Swim Fit program and into Jag Blue. So right from the get-go in our competitive program, she started online, she started on Zoom. And in that setting, had to learn how to navigate what we were doing in terms of dryland training, trying to make connections with everyone in the group. And that's tricky. So she deserves just a huge amount of credit for being brave and starting at that point. And her attendance, everything just came together so wonderfully for her. And then once we were able to get back into the pool, it was fantastic to see that she had already sort of got to know the faces, got to know the people, got to know the, the way that we talk to each other and just that, um, that special kind of group situation that we have with Jag Blue. Uh, Emily also demonstrated fantastic technique throughout. She really, really puts in every effort to do everything as perfectly as possible. And that really did help her once we were able to get back in the water as well. Her strength and coordination were coming along just so fantastically well. So I'm very, very proud to say that Emily is uh, very well deserving of that Zoom Perseverance Award for the year. Great, thank you, Coach Kara. And we will move on to our championship uh, summer awards for the 2021 season. Hello, everyone. Hope everyone can hear me. We hear you. You're good, Christina. Go right ahead. Perfect. So I asked Mark and Sandy what their thoughts were on this from last year. And Mark sent me a little couple of sentences for each athlete and the group. So we're going to start with most improved swimmer award for junior championship. Female is Anna Harper. Congratulations, Anna. What Mark and Sandy had about Anna is she always came to practice with a big smile on her face and gave everything that she had every day. She was always working hard towards her, um, all of her skills to better them every practice. And especially her, she was obsessed with her underwater, um, trying to improve her backstroke races and try to intimidate the big kids. So watch out Ingrid, she's coming for you. And congratulations to Anna Harper. And the male most improved uh, for junior championship is Ben Weir. Although Ben is very quiet, he always leads by example by working very hard in practice. He always challenged himself to go under 30 seconds on every 50 in practice. And he's been doing that regularly since June. So congratulations to Ben.
Uh, Team Spirit Award Junior Champion. Uh, goes to Regan Van Vliet. There she is. Regan Van Vliet has an uncanny ability to recognize who needs encouragement in practice or at swim meets. She uses her smile and great attitude to lift everyone up around her. So congratulations to Regan. Most improved swimmer, Thomas Craig. There he is. He's also our tallest swimmer. Uh, Thomas Craig comes to practice or always comes to work out to push his limits. Um, and his main goal was to win every main set on a regular basis. And he was able to do that pretty much every practice by the end of the year. So congratulations to Thomas. Team Spirit Award, Sebastian Cariaga. If you don't know who Sebastian is, you're going to find out next week when he comes back to train with us for a little bit. Um, he was a university student all of last year as well as this year, and um, it was great to see him take on a leadership role with the team and help out those younger kids by encouraging them to push themselves even harder in practice, even when they were tired. So congratulations, Sebastian. And the Zoom Online Training Award goes to Must Run in the Family, Lila Thiessen. Lila made all the Zoom sessions with a smile on her face and was one of the regulars to lead activation and stretching. Lila would also take the time to show us her latest creations after the Dryland sessions were over and was always interested in what other people were up to and what they were doing and ready to give them praise. So congratulations to Lila. Thank you, Coach Christina. Uh, now we will move to the uh, Performance Program Awards. Rosie. Hi. Okay, so much like Coach Fern and Coach Jackie, Coach Christina, Coach Kara reiterated how much we, what we look for when we look for the most improved. Um, obviously this year we only had one or two races that we could look at for racing improvement, but we're looking for the characteristics that the swimmers are developing. What do they bring to the pool every day? in terms of their attitude and their focus and their work ethic. What do they contribute to the training group? Do they have a positive uh, attitude and offer encouragement to their teammates? Are they listening? Are they learning? Are they responding to instructions? Are their technical skills progressing? And are they ready and willing to work hard day after day? So we, uh, we have the most improved swimmer for 13 under. This swimmer demonstrated a great eagerness to listen, work hard and work smarter by focusing on all of the important things like technique, his turns, his strategies and his competitiveness while having fun doing it all. He challenged himself every day to be better at something. Congratulations to picture Jonah Smith. The next category we have in the performance group is our 14 and 15 year olds. This swimmer almost always has a smile on her face. She is naturally competitive in just about everything and has finally figured out just like Jonah that just working hard is not the only way to get better, but that working smarter, doing things well like turns and technique while having fun is the key to performing well. We are pleased to recognize and congratulate Peyton Sheehan for this award. Now our seniors. <clears throat> this young lady doesn't need any introduction. We saw her on our panel a little bit earlier, but <clears throat> in looking at how things progressed, Ingrid Wilm came back to Cascade after a short stint at the National Center in Vancouver and made contact with us and basically said, may I join your program? Not I'm coming back and I'm joining, but may I join? We've always been very impressed with this young lady's humility and her willingness to be coached and work very hard at what she's doing. It's not often that somebody who <clears throat> 
is that far into their swimming career perseveres to the extent that uh, Ingrid did, but <clears throat> she worked really hard and has worked his way up to a world-class level and is the Cascade Female Swimmers Performance Group Most Improved Swimmer. Congratulations, Ingrid. So now we're going to talk about the Team Spirit Awards and really the one thing about the working at the senior national level in the program and the senior performance level is that there's a routine and there's requirements to be on your game when you come to training. This young lady has a super positive attitude, looks for ways to improve, engages with the coaches and asks for uh, support and advice on different aspects of technique and approaches to training and <clears throat> always has a, a kind word for her teammates and uh, for swimmers who are of her age, who are younger than she is, and generally contributes a great amount in terms of not just the work ethic, but also the uplifting kind of approach that is brought to practice every day. And the Team Spirit Award for the performance group goes to Peyton Kelly. Congratulations, Peyton. And um, just one quick second. Uh, I'm just looking at my slides just before you continue on with your next one i seem to have a problem with my my last slide if you could just bear with me uh for one minute coach dave and coach wendy maybe you can entertain us with a quick little story um while i fix this uh next slide consumers always tell me when i come to practice that you know and they write sort of anonymous goals or not goals but comments on uh, what they like about practice is um, they like the stories that I tell them, right? And often they're funny little things that happen on a day to day basis. And, uh, you know, I like Charlie Brown and Snoopy and different things like that. So I asked the swimmers, like, what is the meaning of life? And, you know, Snoopy lies on his top of his doghouse and he has a little cloud goes off his head and he talks about the meaning of life and it comes up as the number five and he just says the meaning of life is five and i guess the point is is that you have a decision and a choice about how you're going to approach your day approach your week approach your month approach your swim season and by having a positive attitude when you swing your feet out of bed and put your feet on the ground and and are getting ready to do what you're going to do hopefully it's coming swimming and training hard then you're going to be way more successful than if you don't have a purpose in what you're trying to do. And so our approach to things is to be really positive, to have a lot of fun, to try to not tell a really bad joke. And, and if you do, hopefully the swimmers will laugh. And uh, I think we've really accomplished a lot, not only just in the swimming side of things, but also in the, in the requirements of life side of things. When we went through this entire sort of experience of like Jackie said a few minutes ago, we're in the pool, we're out of the pool, we're training hard, we're getting in shape, we're falling back out of shape. And at the end of the day, you know, the resiliency that the Cascade swimmers have shown and that the coaches and the parents and everybody have done in terms of contributing to our culture and our overall well-being of the club is really super positive and super exciting to be working in this environment and seeing what you guys can do as we go forward. Are you ready, Jake? I am just give me. I have one. one more one more story. Sure, sure. I came across a quote from Katrina Lemaidon, who everybody knows is a very accomplished speed skater, winning a few gold medals and different color medals. Um, and she made this comment on CBC Sports just this week, I think, on some CBC Sports radio talk show, and. I'll quote her exactly because she said, people don't necessarily surprise me. She says, I think what I like seeing is that they sometimes surprise themselves because of what they're capable of doing under pressure and in those moments. And that's what I think is so great. She loves seeing that people can surprise themselves because as much as we train, we still kind of go, are we good enough? And so that quote really resonated with me because at the last swim meet that we had last weekend, 
we saw lots of our swimmers surprise themselves and we like to think that we know what they're capable of but sometimes they just show something completely different and away they go and they just take off into their swimming careers and uh it's quite remarkable when they don't have those fears anymore about what if they're not good enough they just be brave and they get up and they perform so i like that quote from katrina lamedon and i thought i would share it Great, thank you. So yeah, sorry, I fixed what the issue was with the slides and um, we're ready for your last award, which is your uh, Zoom award. Okay, so on our uh, Zoom calls, which we, you know, we offered four, five, six, seven, eight times a week sometimes, um, we had one swimmer who couldn't really set up his equipment very well and do his exercises properly inside the house. So he set them up outside. He set up his 4D, he set up his Vaza, which is like the swimming bench outside, out under his favorite tree in his backyard. Some days it was before the sun came up and some days just as the sun was setting, uh, day in, day out, rain or shine with snow, snowflakes, um, rain puddles. And this was for almost all the dry land um, Zoom workouts. So. We wanted to recognize Dawson Sheehan, who demonstrated the most perseverance uh, training online throughout our many months of last year's COVID restrictions. Congratulations, Great. Dawson. Thank you, Coach Dave and Coach Wendy. And with that, um, we've come to the end of our awards uh, that we that we had for this year the 2021 summit awards um, you know as we mentioned earlier this wasn't an opportunity unfortunately where we could get get together like we have done in the past so we certainly appreciate everybody coming on here and being a part of what we were doing remotely we are looking forward to getting everybody together in the new year for an event. Um, look for information on that to come in the next little while, uh, where it won't necessarily be an awards banquet, but just an opportunity to get the entire club together. So uh, we are hopeful we'll be able to do something like that for all ages, um, including our 11 and unders who are on the verge of being able to get uh, vaccinated very shortly here in the province. So we're looking forward to that. I'd like to thank all of our attendees who came on, all of our swimmers. I'd like to thank all of our coaches for being here. And I'd like to especially thank our three swimmers, uh, Yuri, Cole, and Ingrid for being a part of our panel and relaying those great stories that they had about um, little pieces of their career. And on behalf of the Cascade Swim Club, I would like to wish them all good luck next week as they head off for the playoffs, where we're in a fortunate situation with the club as we have a swimmer on the LA team. And we have a couple of swimmers on the Toronto team along with uh, coach Dave. So uh, however things end up, um, Cascade will be very well represented and uh, we will be cheering each and every one of you along uh, as, those, as those playoffs get underway. So thank you once again for everybody for being here. This does wrap up our 2021 Summit Awards and have a great rest of your weekend. And we'll see you all back next week uh, as we get back and uh, get training and get ready for our next competition. Thank you very much again.